All right, what's up my V-Stars? Ready to learn some more AP statistics. In this video, we're going to cover solving for sample size with a given margin of error. And again, this could be done when you're talking about confidence intervals for means or confidence intervals for proportions. Well, in this video, we're going to focus on means and other videos out there for proportions. All right, so it all comes down to understanding the formula for margin of error. And remember, the margin of error is the back part. A confidence interval is built by saying, hey, here's my sample mean. And by no means is that the true, the true mean of the population. But if I go up and down by my margin of error, boy, oh boy, I'm pretty confident that I can find what the truth could be. So that's exactly that. You know, the margin of error is this back part here. The formula that hopefully your teacher taught you is it's T star times S divided by the square root of N. And if you want to know why it's called T star and not Z star, then you, you need to go back and relearn that. Now, anyway... The idea is this, I'm going to give you the margin of error that I want. I'm asking you to find the sample size. Now, I'm going to give you a level of confidence, but keep in mind, I'm actually going to end up using a Z star. Why am I going to use a Z star when the formula says T star? Well, remember, to get a T star, you need to know your degrees of freedom, and your degrees of freedom is based on your sample size. But I don't know my sample size, right? That's what I'm trying to find. So I actually can't find a T star because I don't even know where to begin because I don't even have my sample size, which means I don't know my degrees of freedom, which means I can't find my T star. So that's why I'm going to have to use my buddy the Z star. And the other thing is, is what's the standard deviation? Well, if I don't have my sample, then I don't have my sample mean, then how can I possibly have a standard deviation? So in any problem that's going to ask you this, they will actually give you the standard deviation. And usually what they'll do is they'll give you sigma, the standard deviation of the population, which actually means using Z star is totally okay. So it's just a matter of understanding those couple key concepts there, plugging in what you're told and kind of solving. Pretty easy. Let's do one example, and I think it'll make a lot of sense. So Principal Hebert is trying to estimate the mean IQ of all the students in her school district. She knows that the typical standard deviation for IQ is 15. And that's true, right? Typically, the standard deviation for IQ scores is 15. Now, that's for an individual person. Well, you know, in order to estimate her school's mean IQ to within four points, so she wants an interval that's pretty tight. She wants a margin of error that is only up and down four points. Um, and that's going to be pretty small, you know. So what sample size is it going to take to do that and still be 95% confident? So let's go ahead and write out that formula for margin of error. Margin of error is our T star times S divided by the square root of N. All right, now remember that word within, the word within is the English word for plus or minus, up or down. So that's our margin of error. So even though I didn't use the word margin of error, um, that's what that is, right? The word within. So my margin of error is four. Now this is not a proportion question, so please do not move that. This is not 4%. So don't move the decimal. That's what you do with our percentages. This is four points. This is a number. So we don't need any kind of movement of the decimal. Now, like I already explained, I can't use T star. I mean, I can't possibly use T star because I don't even know my sample size to try to find T star. And T star is based on your sample size. So I'm going to have to use my friend invert norm here. And that's going to create a Z star. Now, if your teacher did not show you how to use invert norm, you could always look up your Z star on a table. But my students should not use a uh, invert norm. So if I'm 95% confident, that puts 0.025 or 2.5% at the bottom. And the bottom is the area that the calculator is looking for. And I get 1.9600. If that 6 tells that 99 to go up, so that is 1.9600. Now, the standard deviation, that's 15. Now, that's actually sigma. So, that, I mean, this isn't just the standard deviation of a sample. I mean, this is the standard deviation of the population. So that actually is totally cool for me to use a Z star in this situation. And again, I do not know N, so I'm going to solve for N down there. Now, <laughs> excuse me. So now I just got to solve for N. Again, I'm very big on not touching a calculator, doing, doing any calculator work until the very final step. So I show all of my work. All right, first step is to undo the multiplication of 1.96, and that can be done with division. So I'm going to divide the 1.96 over. Now, there's actually several different ways you could solve this from this point on. I'm going to show you how I solve it. Again, just doing simple math, but some kids might cross multiply, yada, yada, yada. But I'm going to show you how I would do it. Instead of dividing, again, I want to solve for n, so I'm actually going to multiply that square root of n over to the other side. Again, you never want to solve an equation with the variable in the denominator. You always want to solve it 
when it's not the denominator. So that's why I multiply it over. And then now, again, I'm trying to solve for n, so I do need to undo this multiplication. I need to do division with that. So I get the square root of n equals 15 divided by 4 divided by 1.96. Now, um, obviously, if you are good at math, you know that instead of dividing by a fraction, I can multiply by the reciprocal. So if you want to multiply by 1.96 over 4, feel free, but I'm going to leave it like this, just following my math to the T. Now, the final step is to say, hey, wait a minute, I want to know what n is, not the square root of n. So I am going to need to go ahead and square both sides. So I'm going to take this 15 divided by 4, divided by 1.96. I'm going to divide all that. I'm sorry, not going to divide all that. I'm going to square all of that. So I'm going to take a big, giant square, all of that. So now, at the very end is when I go to my calculator. So let's see, I need a parenthesis for the 15. I'm going to divide by. Now, because I'm going to divide by a fraction, I need another set of parentheses. That's the 4 divided by the 1.96. Close that parenthesis. Close off. So there's the entire number. 15 divided by 4 divided by 1.96. And I need to square all of that. And I get, <coughs> excuse me again, 54.0225. And again, always round up. You'd rather have a bigger sample size than smaller. So that's going to round up to about 55 people. So if I want to go ahead and select 55 people, get a sample mean, Maybe my sample mean comes back at 103, who the heck knows. But by ants, by surveying 55 people, I'm guaranteeing myself a margin of error of plus or minus four points. And that is what I tried to get. So there you go. That's how you solve for sample size. Pretty easy. Just a couple concepts there you got to understand. And, um, you know, obviously got to understand a little bit of algebra. So peace out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Can't wait to teach you more about AP statistics.